Hey everybody, I'm Alice McClellan. And I'm Mason McClellan. And we're the Backtrack Brothers. We go back and watch movies and see how they hold up at the end of the year, at least for this video. Today we're gonna go over my favorite movies that have released in 2022. Yeah, his top five. That I have seen. Now there might be a lot of good movies that I have not seen. Either I'm too immature or just have not had the time to watch them. Yeah, he's but a busy man. He's got a girlfriend, he's got school, he's got other responsibilities that I don't know about and don't care to know about. That's totally fine. So he hasn't had time to watch and criticize Power of the Dog. Get over it, okay? Before we start the whole list, yep. you've been Pointing saying, fingers. A lot of pointing here already. <laughs> this video's barely started. You've been saying that Barbarian is great. I, I like it a lot. And we're going to be doing a long form on that soon, so. Very soon. Look forward to that. It's not already. That's right. But I feel like it would really make this list, especially over a few picks. Okay. So that's kind of like my honorable mention because yeah. I am watching that soon. Yeah. But yes. And I'll toss it out there. I am a big fan of Barbarian. It definitely has, you know, it's not a perfect movie, but it's right up my alley in terms of the, you know, lots of different twists and turns and it's got some intensity and some <laughs> violence, but not too much of the gore stuff. So yeah. it's kind of right up my alley. And I love Justin Long. I'm just gonna leave that there. All right, so number five on my list of movies that I've released in 2022. Number five. Is the new Scream movie. Or the, the new Scream movie. movie, I like it, okay. So, I, I have not seen it, so uh, tell me about it. I, I, I obviously know of the older yeah. Screams and the Scream franchise, but I have not seen the new one. So I know they've brought back a lot of the old characters. I don't know their exact names because I haven't seen the older movies, right. but I know they brought back a lot of these characters. Yeah. I thought a lot of like, the actors thing was pretty strong and okay. not not really the dialogue and stuff part okay. but in like the fear kind of screaming and gotcha stuff. Right. I mean they're all really fresh meat <laughs> and the most entertaining thing about this movie is just finding out you know, classic who scream, like right. trying to figure out who's the killer. Yes. Yeah, and one thing I know the Scream franchise always does well is kind of like commenting on the current horror landscape and doing kind of like different like all not not parodying, but you know, kind of like making fun of horror tropes. They definitely did that. So <laughs> I, that's where I'm. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm interested when I do see it what those will that be. Was, that was my next like note. It definitely references and kind of puts like the horror genre mm -hmm. into the theme of the movie. Okay. It's, it's kind of weird in that sense. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, something that ca caught me off guard and sometimes a little bit cringy, but like, right. it still was there. And that's what's, and that's what's great about the Scream franchise is it's not just a straight up corny slasher. I think it kind of, it's a little bit more highbrow than people expect it to be. Yeah. Especially if that was your first Scream movie, you probably mm -hmm. weren't expecting that, right? Yeah. And the opening scene does have some pretty, as a funny premise. I'll oh, okay, that okay. Um, there's All a right. little bit of trivia involved, I'll say that. Trivia? Yeah. Nothing, nothing gets me more excited <laughs> than a movie that properly utilizes trivia. <laughs> Thank you, Scream. <laughs> So number four on my list is, number four. it's a fun movie to watch, okay. not the most intellectual thing, but still fun, mm -hmm. The Adam Project. Adam Project. With Ryan Reynolds. Uh-huh. And I know there's a bunch of other faces that you probably know. Yeah, yeah, I just, so I haven't seen this, but before we started recording this, I did a quick look up. So Mark Ruffalo's in it, I'm a fan of him. You got Zoe Saldana, Ryan Reynolds. Um, but uh, why don't you go ahead and fill him in just on a high level what this plot is. <laughs> so do you know what's funny? What's that? Is that I don't exactly know. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just remember this is like one of the first movies I watched with my girlfriend. Uh, oh, that, all right, that explains a and lot. And therefore, it has like a so this as a connection to me. This movie is on this list uh, for I the have, wrong reasons. I have no <laughs> actual knowledge of this movie. I just don't remember. I'm sure your girlfriend didn't mind having Ryan Reynolds on the screen as she was doing whatever you guys <laughs> I think, were doing. No, that was basically, we, we were just talking about, or are you Just about, talking, just no, talking. We were just sitting there talking about Ryan Reynolds on the couch <laughs> on <a> Saturday night. <laughs> just sitting there talking about the Adam Project, as anyone would do. Oh, it hit me. It hit me. Okay, here we go. Breaking news. I know what the yeah. movie's about. Da -da -da -da. So, this Ryan Reynolds is a future version of the little boy. There you go. Time travels back in time uh, to see the kid and yeah. basically give him, I think it's like end the world kind of thing where yeah. it's like you gotta do so it's like Ryan Reynolds, has a, he goes back in time and works with a 12 year old version of himself to save the world. Yes. 
And boy, does that sound like I've, I heard it was really bad just from some podcasts and reviews I heard. But uh, yeah, so I never gave it a shot. But you ranked it number four, so maybe. And no, it's not because it's good. It's just because again, I forgot what it was about. You have a close but personal connection. With I have a close movie. connection with it. Good movies incoming. Oh, finally, <laughs> number good three Lord. is the Batman. The Batman. The okay. Batman. Yes. Yes. And I have seen this one. So first one on this list that I've seen. And honestly, I'm proud. This is the first one on this list. And I've seen. <laughs> no offense. I thought Patterson's performance was really good as Batman. It's yeah. surprising because, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey guy is not supposed to be the best Batman. Yeah, hey, listen. In my opinion, he was one of them. So, yeah. And yeah. I thought the um, the Riddler, it was a weird kind of interesting take, kind of combining him and the yeah. Joker's kind of like insane yeah. type of style. And, and Paul Dano is awesome. Yeah. Like, was, he's just a great actor. Yeah, it was really, he was scary. He yeah. did some crazy shit and yeah. it, was, it was cool and I liked the mystery kind of thing yeah the only thing is that I felt like the movie was a little bit long and boring but yeah again as a 15 14 year old teenager when I saw this everything's kind of boring if it's, <laughs> if it's at all slow or that's whatever. the period of life that Mason's in right now <laughs> oh shit not blowing up right now this is dumb speed it up <laughs> No, but I can see how this is. I can see how this com is a really good movie, and yeah. I enjoyed it, but still kind of got lost compared to like the other Batman. Movies. Yeah, it, I think that is totally fair, right? Like, I think this the Batman. I, I'm a huge fan of it too, and I think it harkens back more to like the original Batman comics, where the original Batman was just a detective. You know, yeah. it wasn't as souped up as he becomes mm -hmm. in the later magazine, in the later comics, and the later movies. And yeah, the fight scenes are sick. Like yeah, everything they are. The chase scene and they're everything. brutal they're all cool but the, there's not really that many of them and i feel like a lot of the time it's just him looking for clues yeah and i, I don't know it's not the most entertaining thing yeah it's uh it's almost like christopher nolan did too good of a job and kind of <laughs> fucked over everyone else that wants to do batman again <laughs> it's unfortunate it's kind of like i mean good luck to whoever wants to try and follow up endgame good luck to anyone who tries to pull off that next feat marvel can't even do it <laughs> no but I, I thought this was a good movie. I yeah, liked that. Yeah, I thought yeah, it yeah. for like following up Christopher Nolan's series. Right. I, I was gonna say they didn't completely fall on their face. Like there's a lot of ways that that movie could have been really bad, yeah. and I don't think it. Well, I thought it was a really good. Movie. And even for like the side characters, like Zoe yeah. Travis says Catwoman. Yeah. Or, and then. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, can you do that again? The, no, I think that's good. Oh. <laughs> I think uh, the Penguin was like, fit the role well. Oh, yeah. I don't know who the actor is, but he did great. Yeah, I wish they would have gotten Danny DeVito again, though. Yeah. Just because he's like the Penguin. He is the Penguin. Like in real life <laughs> and everything. I don't know yeah. if it would have fit the style of the movie, yeah. but it would have been really good. Yeah, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> number three. Yeah, that's a good pick. All right, number two is Top Gun Maverick. Ooh, that wasn't what I was going to guess. I was thinking maybe that would be number one, but okay. So Top Gun Maverick number two. So I didn't like the first movie we didn't like the first movie yeah. yeah you watched the original we watched that together before you went to see Top Gun Maverick right yes. yeah again very good important thing you did that but that that goes to show you that you don't need to like the original to like yeah. the second Top Gun yeah and I thought you know second Top Gun was way better it was more intense I, they had the great balls of fire thing in there which they kind of had to have to like make everyone happy but at the same time really another fun. great sex scene <laughs> which is necessary in every <laughs> Top Gun scene <laughs> Every Top Gun yeah. film, they they did approach it differently. They like they didn't have a bunch of like war stuff really in there. They just had right. the training pilots and stuff. And even that was like they somehow made that really intense. Okay. And I don't know. I really liked it. You yeah. Like I've that? not seen Top Gun Maverick. It's it's one of those things like I'm one of these annoying people when something is like super popular. A lot of times I'm like eh. Which, really? I, yeah. It's not it's not one of my favorite traits of myself. I'm being very honest. <laughs> You miss out on some cool shit when you're like that, but I'm sure there's people watching this video right now that can relate to what I'm talking about. Um, which is weird, because like Avatar Way of the Water, I'm not that way about. But almost that's almost like, it's a, it's a movie experience, but the same way. So I'm going to say, same thing with Top Gun. I think the issue is my how much I didn't enjoy the first Top Gun sullied how much I'm into the second one. You know what I mean? But I really should just, just 
just bite off the ball and just yeah. watch Maverick. Once Maverick is on HBO Max or something where I can watch it for free, I will watch it mm. for sure. It, it's probably by now. Or it's getting close. It's yeah. getting there. It, I, I might be somewhere already, but yeah. I mean, everyone's watching it on like planes and shit. I'll be there. They're still making money on that movie. They're not going to put it on streaming until they're like fully milked that yeah. cow. You know what I mean? Mm. But I mean, I, it made me, I don't think it made me like the first movie more, but it definitely made up for how much I didn't like the first movie. And yeah, I don't know. They had a bunch of cool kind of characters in there. They had yeah. like Goose's son right. as one of the characters. I think that was Miles Teller, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Miles Teller's awesome. Yeah, it was, It was. I liked it a lot. It was yeah. number one. Number on one. My, number one on my number list. One. Number, number one <laughs> on my list. I said this in my top movies of all time is Nope. So you got number one, you got Nope. Yes. Ranking over Top Gun Maverick. I, I think it's really just my personal movie bias. Yeah. I think Nope was, I mean, I was really looking forward to Nope. Yeah. I, and you brought your I girlfriend into the theater it. and. No. <laughs> I took my over Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> I'm shocked Top Gun Maverick did not <laughs> leap over Nope considering you have the girlfriend aspect thrown in. <laughs> nope is right now at least my favorite Jordan Peele movie. I think wow. it has a ton of like really cool visuals, yeah. some really good themes that even after the movie I like I have my own kind of interpretation which is what you're supposed to do. But right. then after that I kind of watched a bunch of YouTube videos, did whatever. And even from, just from that I got more and more interested in right. this movie to where I had to rewatch it and do all this stuff. And yeah. I, I, did you I watch it for a second movie. time already? Yes I did. Nice, nice. That's good. I don't know. I really like this movie. Yeah. I thought like the, especially the first couple of shows that dropped where it didn't even show like what was what they were scared of. Right, right. They just said, like, they looked up, black screen, nope. Yeah. And really all that was like, Those what? trailers were really effective. Yeah. Yeah, they were. And now, I haven't seen this one either. I'm just thinking about it. I'm, the last few years, basically ever since uh, the beginning of what we know as lockdown period, uh, I kind of fell out of going to the movies as did the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, and it's just been kind of hard to get back on that horse. Uh, there's so many great movies on streaming services that have kind of been taking that time to catch up on movies, yeah. not as much to watch newer ones, and there's a, there hasn't been as many newer movies. But you can see with this list, outside of number four, The Adam Project, there's a lot of, <laughs> they're starting to put out good movies again. Yeah. You gotta get out to the theater. So I, 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 I almost regret not having seen Nope in the theaters, but that's mm. another one. Just like Top Gun Maverick, as soon as it comes out on streaming yeah. services, on the, one of the six streaming services I pay money for, I'll watch it then. Uh, and I'm really excited for it because yeah. I've enjoyed all of Peel's movies so far. I'm suspecting this will probably be my favorite based on everything I've heard from you and read online from other people. Uh, so. I'm really happy with your list, Mason. I'm, I think you're starting to develop pretty good uh, taste for uh, that in project. Uh, that's just personal life. Yeah, I mean, I understand, dude. Like, I mean, the first girlfriend moment I had was watching Joe Dirt. So I have a special, <laughs> so I have a special connection to Joe Dirt. But Joe Dirt's a good movie. I'll fucking, I'll fight to the mat for that movie any day. <laughs> Do you know about Joe Dirt? I do not know. Oh my God, dude. You would actually, I'm get up right now. you would enjoy Joe Dirt. Here is the uh, description for Joe Dirt, by the way. <laughs> He's the wrong person at the wrong place at the wrong time. Joe Dirt or David Spade is a janitor with a mullet hairdo, acid wash jeans, and a dream to find the parents that he lost at the Grand Canyon when he was eight. Yup. <laughs> as he had, as his wandering misguided search takes him for one misadventure to another. He finds his way to Los Angeles, where a shock jock, Dennis Miller, brings Joe on the radio to insult him. But as Joe's story <laughs> unfolds, jeers turn to cheers as the entire city is cap cap captiva captivated. There you go. Uh, there we yeah. go. Yeah, it's got a very hefty 9% on Rotten Tomatoes and 20% on TV Guide. Which who reads TV Guide in 2022? <laughs> Fuck you, TV Guide. You don't get to talk shit on Joe Dirt. I, yeah, I really, I, I think you have a respectable list. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, outside of the Adam Project, which you're, you're 15, you're gonna like some dumb <laughs> movies, it happens. Like there's some movies that were shitty that I watched when I was 15, I still hold dear to my heart. It's okay if the Adam Project is one of those for you. Just understand in 10 years, you're gonna look back at this and yeah, not be happy with yourself. <laughs> but that's life, such is life. So, <laughs> but one thing I'm noticing looking at your list, I, I like you have some variety, right? Mm -hmm. So you got kind of Scream, which is, you know, you got, got the traditional slasher with a little bit of a modern twist 
twist, kind of like that scream element. You got Nope, which is horror, but kind of more of a thriller-esque type of thing. Yeah. And then you you have your action, but you have like your blockbuster action of Top Gun Maverick, which is just silly, fun, stupid action, versus Batman is a little bit more serious. It is blockbuster again, don't get me wrong, but it's a little bit more somber, dark. Yeah. So I like that you're having a little bit of range. You don't just, you didn't just list off five comedies. You didn't list off five <laughs> just dumb action movies. Yeah. So it's good to see that you are, you have some type of range because mm. I think there's too many people that just like, I only like comedies. I only like drama movies. I only watch documentaries. You fucking sickos. <laughs> Fucking weirdos. You're only watching documentaries. <laughs> Listen, you're so smart. You watch documentaries. Cool. So, <laughs> all right. So here's my list before we end the video. Yeah. Uh, number five is Scream. That's number one. Number four is The Adam Project. Boo. Number three is The Batman. Boo. Number two is Top Gun Maverick. Okay. And okay. number one is Nope. Solid. All right. So. Gonna toss this out to our viewers. Please let us know what you think of Mason's list. Once again, as we said, he doesn't have all the time in the world to see every movie that came out this year. There are a lot of great movies that did not make this list. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have a top five that you saw this year. We'd love to hear them. And if you got something negative to say, just get, get on out of here. Thanks for checking out this video. Like and subscribe and let us know what you thought about the movie in the comments below. Let us know if there's any movies you want us to watch. Who knows, maybe we'll watch them together.